Hello and welcome to another of our videos introducing the Arduino, the popular open source electronics prototyping platform or microcontroller. In this foundation series video, we're going to look at one of the simplest ways of expanding your Arduino hardware. And that's by coupling it with an add-on electronics board or daughter board, or as they're called in the Arduino world, shields. This gives it enhanced capability. Popular examples that are frequently used by enthusiasts around the world, including ethernet shields or display boards. And we're going to look at how we can use an LCD shield. Adding a display shield allows the Arduino to communicate with you. So you can find out what it's doing and have some interaction with it. Now the LCD board we are going to use came from a company in the UK called Hobbytronics. And the cost of it was only £11, or that's around $18. Now let's have a look at the Hobbytronics website. If we go to the Arduino section and then just click on Shields, it'll give you an example of all the types of shields that are available. There's the Ethernet shield, there's an XB, which is a little radio module, there's a GPS shield. But this is the one we have got here, which is the Arduino LCD keypad shield for £10.99. And if we have a look at the description, it tells you that it has a 16 by 2 LCD. So that's 16 characters wide by two rows LCD. But it also has a keypad. And it's then it tells you which pins it uses because you need to make sure that those pins are not being used by anything else. And it uses pins 8, 9, 4, 5, 6 and 7. 8 and 9 are control pins and 4, 5, 6 and 7 is where the data from the Arduino will come from. And then it goes and tells you more about those pin connections. And it also has some code to get it working. So you can put that into a sketch and immediately have the display showing you some text on the screen. But there's one little clever thing that it does here, and that is with the buttons. You can see that it only uses one pin, analog zero, and yet it has buttons select, up, right, down, and left. So the question here is, how does the, this shield get away with using one analog input to read multiple buttons? And this is a great question, and it's worth just spending a couple of minutes on to explain how it does it. Now, an analog input on the Arduino has a 10-bit analog to digital converter. So what it can do is return integer values of between 0 and 1023, depending on the input voltage on that pin. Now, Let's just take an example circuit to try and explain this to you. Here we have a circuit that has five volts across a series of resistors. The voltage at the end of each of the resistors will be different, so the analog input pin will return a different value depending on which switch is pressed. By testing for a different value in your Arduino code, in your sketch, you can determine which button was pressed. So that's how the LCD shield manages to have five buttons connected at the same time. That's pretty clever. But with multiple analog inputs and with being able to sense multiple buttons, you can see that it's possible to connect a lot of switches to an Arduino. So here is the LCD shield. You can see the buttons on the lower left. There are actually six buttons, because uh, the six button is a reset button, which actually resets the whole of the Arduino. And I didn't mention before, but there is a reset button on the Arduino that allows you to uh, reset it in case your code is got it in a running in a loop and it won't stop doing what it's doing. The pins to connect to the Arduino are on the uh, bottom of the board. And let's connect it to our Arduino Leonardo that we have here. So what you have to do is to very carefully line all the pins up and just apply a little bit of gentle pressure. And there we are. You have the 
LCD attached to the Arduino. So that's the hardware connected, the LCD shield connected to the Arduino. But of course, it's not going to do anything without us telling the display what to do. So we need to load the Arduino development environment and start using the LCD shield. So here I have a sketch. What I have done is to take the example code that was from the Hobbitronic site and add just a few additional comments in it. That's the lines with this slash slash in front of it. And apart from that, it is almost identical to the example code. I have told it to print to the display. Uh, you control it to TV. Let's very quickly go through the code. The first thing at the top is there is an include to a library. So if you remember, libraries are additional sets of instructions. So it includes the liquid crystal library. We initialize the liquid crystal LCD with the pins we're going to use. And on the Hobbitronics website, it said it uses pins eight and nine for control functions, and then four, five, six, and seven for the data. So the LCD is now defined with all those pins. We then define the number of columns and rows that we have. So LCD begins, so it's 16 columns, two rows. That's a 16 by two display. Then you could position where you're going to print to the display by using a set cursor. This is going to position zero at row zero. That's another thing that's worth remembering. When you're doing these things, don't start from one. Everything starts from zero. So if you have two rows, it's zero and one, not one and two. So we're positioning the cursor at zero, zero. We're then going to print, you control it, TV. Move the cursor to position zero and row one, and we're going to print button. Now then, in the main program loop, we're doing an analog read of the, uh, of the input from, that's coming from the LCD. So this is reading what button you are pressing. And it's only reading on that single channel. But what it is then doing is testing the value of it. If the value is less than 100, it's going to print right. If it's um, up to 200, it's going to print up, etc. So it just reads the value and then will print the name of the key. And this is how the sketch is detecting which of the one, two, three, four, five buttons has been pressed, even though we're use only using one analog read pin, which is pin zero. So that's the sketch. We need to plug in the USB cable to our Arduino board and upload it and see what happens. So there's nothing on the display at the moment and you wouldn't expect that. So while you're looking at the display, I will upload the code. I've already verified it. And then in just a few seconds. There we go. It says you control it TV and button. So if I press the select button, it tells me I've pressed the select button. If I press the left button, etc., etc., And we can just press those buttons. And we now have the Arduino displaying information for us. Now, that's all well and good. And that demonstrates how you can use a display. And what we thought we'd do is we'd just create a very, very simple game and load that onto the Arduino to give you an example of a little bit of interaction with an Arduino program, with a sketch. What I've done is to create a game that you press one button and it starts counting itself. And then you have to press, you press a second button. And the idea is you don't press the second button until you think five seconds are up. And if you have got it correct and you're at around approximately five seconds, it's, a, it's rounded to, uh, to the nearest whole second, you'll get a point for every time you get it right. And then you can reset it. So let's very quickly look at the sketch. 
This is the, the sketch I have. And just a reminder that all these uh, sketches will be on our website. We define some uh, variables, uh, initialize the library. A lot of this we've just covered in the previous uh, sketch. And then the sort of semi-clever semi bits are that it just sets the values of the start and stop times when you press the button. And then when you press the stop button, which is the right button, it then checks to see if the difference between the, uh, the start time and the stop time was equal to five seconds. The five seconds, by the way, is set up here in this test time, which is 5,000 milliseconds. So if you wanted to change it to three seconds or 20 seconds, you could do that. Or if you wanted to write some code that would change it for you, that's, where, that's the variable that you would need to change. I'm not going to go through it all. It has taken that first sketch that we use and just enhanced it. But I am going to press the upload button and upload it to the Arduino. And we can then have a look at it and we can play this very simple game. So if I press the left button, it says count. Is this about five seconds? Yep, that's about five seconds. I press the right button. Oh, I was wrong. It says four seconds and my score is zero. So let's have another go. One elephant, two elephants, three elephants, four elephants, five elephants. Hooray! I got it right. It was five seconds and my score is one. So just one more go. Press the left. One elephant, two elephants three elephants, four elephants, five elephants, and a bit elephants. Oh, seven seconds, I was way out. And if you want to reset the score, you can press the select button and it clears the score. Well, that might not keep you amused for very long, but it does show you the type of things that you can do with the buttons and with an LCD display. Now, there are many types of shields available, including display shields, Ethernet, GPS, XB radios, prototyping shields where you can build your own circuits, and many more. We've connected an LCD shield to the Arduino and demonstrated how it can be used. Having a display really enhances the capability of the Arduino and opens up additional possibilities for your projects. I'm sure you will soon think of a few things that you could make with an Arduino coupled with a display. For more information on this and our other Arduino videos, check out our website at youcontrolit.tv. You can follow us on Twitter at youcontrolit.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.